Hello and welcome back. Last time we talked about stability and we learned some pretty, I call it voodoo, voodoo principles. And I promised next time we are going to talk about a criteria which is a little bit more understandable. Yeah? And this we are going to do. This time we are talking about the Nyquist criteria. The Nyquist criteria, like every criteria else, yeah, is based on the reference transfer function. Yeah? Remember this picture? Reference transfer function, I'm sure you remember, was Fw is Fr multiplied by Fs. Yeah? regulator and system 1 plus fr multiplied by fs this was the transfer function of how w is transferred to x yeah? and also remember we talked about the open loop transfer function so only fr multiplied by fs this means this is nothing more than the open loop divided by 1 plus the open loop. And I'm also sure you remember this is the interesting part here. Yeah? Because we said if there is a pole in the transfer function, yeah? what means this is zero? Yeah? Then there is a pole. Yeah? And if there is a solution for this, and the solution is plus minus j omega 1. Okay, no real part on the imaginary axis, then we have stability border reached. So basically, what we are trying to calculate is 1 plus FO from J omega 1 is 0. Okay, that's the Nyquist criteria. If this equation has a solution, we are right on the stability. Yeah. So this further means FO from J omega 1 equals minus 1. Yeah. And this is again 1 and argument minus 180 degree. Okay. This here, this minus 1 or minus or 1 absolute value on that argument minus 180 degree, which is also minus 1, is called Nyquist point. Okay, that's the Nyquist point. What this Nyquist point is about, we're going to see. Let's make an example that is clearer. I will use pretty much the same situation like here, but with real numbers. Okay, So let's draw it. Same structure with regulator, controller, and and system. Yeah. Almost done. Here we have the x, this is here minus, and here we do have w, this is plus. And I said we are using a real system, yeah? what basically means we have, for instance, a PT2 system. Yeah? And here we have some controller, and this controller shall be k divided by 1 plus s. Yeah. This should be the transfer function of the controller. Yeah. It's not a too far fetch. Looks a little bit like a p controller, but it's a pt1 element. Yeah. Should do the trick. Yeah. So let's calculate 
our FO here. Huh? Let's calculate our FO because this we are interested in. FO from S is K 1 plus S multiplied by 1 divided 1 plus S squared. And this is K divided by 1 plus S the third. What further means, yeah, if I calculate this, if I solve the bracket, yeah, we would reach FO from S equals this K, of course, yeah, and then there is this formula 1 plus 3S plus 3S squared yeah, plus S the third. This is the bracket solved. Now let's think about what does it mean if we are using j omega. Okay. So if s will be j omega, s squared will be j squared omega squared, and j squared is minus. So this is minus omega squared. Yeah. And s the third would be minus omega squared, this is s multiplied by j omega, this is j omega the third and minus. Don't forget the minus. So, let's put this away. Let's make, let's transfer this to fo from j omega and this is k divided 1 plus 3s j omega 3 yeah, plus 3s squared 3 times minus omega squared yeah, and then um, plus s squared s the third this is minus j omega the third so we have k divided by 1 uh, minus 3 omega squared plus j 3 omega minus omega the third okay this is fo from j omega actually what we're going to calculate yeah, is this one so 1 plus fo from j omega 1 is 1 plus k divided 1 minus omega a uh, 3 omega 1 3 omega 1 squared plus j 3 omega 1 minus omega 1 the third is 0 now I simply multiply multiply with this yeah. so I get 1 minus 3 omega 1 squared plus j 3 omega 1 minus omega 1 the third yeah. and then there is plus k yeah, I will write it here and this is 0 okay. now we can compare real part and imaginary part. Let's look at the real part. The real part k plus 1 minus 3 omega 1 squared yeah, is 0. That's the equation of the real part, this one. And now let's look at the imaginary part, this one. This means 3 omega 1 minus omega 1 the third is 0. Okay, because the imaginary part here is also 0. Okay, here we can get something out. So omega 1, 3 minus omega 1 squared. So this means either omega 1 is 0 
it's the trivial solution or yeah, omega 1 is 0 yeah, or 3 minus omega 1 is 0 this means omega 1 squared is 3 omega 1 is square root of 3 okay this is the so-called trivial solution yeah. at 0 we at 0 this here means our real part our real part will be 0 at square root of 3 okay square root of 3 frequency of square root of 3 seconds per second rad per second we will be at 0 imaginary part what does it mean for this one yeah. here k plus 1 minus 3 times n squared yeah, is 0 3 multiplied by 3 is 9 k plus 1 minus 9 is 0 yeah. so k is 8 at a factor k is 8 we will reach stability border stability yeah? we'll reach border stability of our system here and this border stability will swing with the frequency of square root of 3 rad per second let's have a look on the border plot or let's have a look on the Nyquist plot because actually this is a little bit more graphic I've prepared here for whatever reason yeah, I've prepared it here I already you see the dots I already calculated this a little bit in advance okay at omega equals zero uh, at omega equals zero here if you look at this or this if omega is zero this is zero this is zero k divided by one we are at eight yeah? and I did this for several points and we end up with a Nyquist plot which is looking like this so this is the Nyquist plot of exactly this system yeah? and here we are hitting exactly minus one yeah. here we are, hit, we are hitting exactly minus one here this here this is the nucleus point minus one okay. if our system is running exactly through this nucleus point yeah. if our system is running exactly through this nucleus point yeah, it's border stability yeah. and here here we have a frequency of zero that's the trivial solution yeah? omega is zero imaginary part is zero here we have imaginary part zero and here we have a frequency of square root of three yeah here we have around zero dot five eight yeah and here it's zero dot one zero dot two three four and so on yeah? and up to here square root of three that's the border case how would a stable system look like if the amplification is a little bit less then we would for instance not start at six i uh, not start at eight but at six and our snail house looks basically exactly the same but a little bit scaled yeah, because it's just would look for instance like this sorry for this one yeah. and here we're going up this would be a stable system and now let's have a short look at an instable system let's say k equals 10 yeah. then 
we would end up at the bigger snail house and we would also end up here like this so the red one is instable and now we can see the meaning of the nucleus plot now we can see the meaning of the nucleus plot if we are surrounding the nucleus plot like in this red thing yeah, then it's not stable if we are not surrounding the nucleus plot then we are stable and if we are exactly running through the nucleus plot then it's the border case. Okay. This is how stability can be done. We can even look how stable it will be. Yeah. Here, this is omega d, Durchtrittsfrequenz in German. Okay, omega d. This is where we hit the circle of absolute value one. If you look at this, here we have some reserve. Yeah? This is the phase reserve. Yeah? And also here we are lower than 1. And here we can define an amplitude reserve. What means amplitude reserve? Amplitude reserve means I can multiply this to reach to stability. Yeah? In this case it's in this case, we are already at 0 0.75, so we can multiply with 1 divided by 0 0.75, 4 third. Okay? 4 drittel, 4 third, is our amplitude reserve. Our phase reserve here is, I don't know, 20 degree. Okay? The system bigger the amplitude reserve is, the bigger the, the uh, phase reserve is, the more stable is the system. So what we uh, need to be, uh, we need to be away from this minus 180 degree. Uh, at an amplification of 1, uh, we need to be below minus 180 degree since the nucleus point is holding exactly the same information like our Bode plot here we can even throw it in the Bode plot let's start with the border system we start at 8 1 2 3 4 8 here that here and pretty much at one we will go very steep down we will end up here so here we change and here we're going down this is how this looks like And our stable system exactly exactly where we hit the one line here we reach a phase shift of minus 180 degree here okay we reach this phase shift of minus 180 degree because here we would have phase zero and then we change quite quite a lot and we will end up somewhere here at minus 270 yeah, here this is how this would look like Okay, this is how this would look like. It's pretty much the same information like here. At 1, we do have minus 180 degree. At 1, 
we do have minus 180 degree. Now let's look at uh, the green one. Uh, the green line, we start at 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's here. Yeah. So it's just shifted exactly that way. Yeah. It's just a parallel. And we hit it here. Here we go in down. Yeah. It's just this line just shifted down. What it means? Here we hit a little bit sooner. And here, puck. And here we see the phase reserve, okay? Here we see the phase reserve. That's the reserve we got. That's the reserve we got to minus 180 degrees. That's exactly this one. Okay. And here we have amplification range 1. And here, puck. This here. This is the amplitude reserve. Okay. This is the amplitude reserve. We could even multiply this by this factor and we are at the stability border. Let's have a look at the red line. The red line is above here. Exactly at the same position we are dropping. And we are dropping here in parallel. Now let's watch where we hit. Oh yeah, below minus 180. Not stable. Okay, amplitude reserve negative. Oh yeah. Also here. Ah, phase reserve negative. Amplitude reserve below one. Not good. Those two things, they mean pretty much the same. Okay. Those two things show exactly the same behavior of the nucleus criteria. So what we are actually looking at is the transfer function of the open loop. That's maybe strange. We're looking at the transfer function of the open loop. Remember, we had this FO here. We used this FO. That's the transfer function of the open loop, those lines. Yeah? And out of the transfer function of the open loop, we can say something about stability of the closed system. Pooh, isn't this strange? And I promised that it will be clearer to you. And now I'm telling really something strange, right? Let's have a look again at this picture. Yeah? What does it mean, open loop? Yeah. Or it means, it basically means the transfer from xd to x. Okay? So if the transfer from xd to x is so unlucky that if I feed it back, yeah, because it's phase shift to minus 180 degree, so it's minus then, and I subtract, I will add it, okay? Because this comes back negative and I subtract it, so I add it again. Whatever is at minus 180 degree here, I will add to the difference. What does this mean now? If something is running through and coming back, even stronger than before, the red line, yeah, then in the next loop, it will get stronger and stronger and stronger. This is instability. Okay? If I just make a, a short rattle here, yeah, and this is increasing itself, holding itself because it's just going in loops, yeah, this will grow to instability. If we are below, okay, if we are below here, then 
whatever comes back is a little bit less than before. So it's a little bit less than before. And next loop, even less, even less, even less, even less. Even less. And then it will be gone. So if we are here at minus 180, below 1, we are fine. The further we are away from 1, the sooner this will stop. It's clear. If 99% is coming back, it will run quite a long time. If 10% is coming back, gone. And if we are exactly if the same amount is coming back which are put in, yeah, this will run in circles for eternity and swing, 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 and it will swing exactly with the frequency I have here. Yeah, we calculate it first. Now, now it looks much more logical, hopefully. Yeah? Now I hope you also think I could keep my promise that it is much more obvious, this stability. So, we said also that the bigger the amplitude reserve and the phase reserve are, yeah, the more stable is the system. Yeah. So why don't have a lot of amplitude reserve and a lot of phase reserve? Because then we are really slow. Okay? Then our system is not reacting anymore. So what is a good... What is a good advice? Well, let's say there are a few cases. If in your application it is important that reference value changes are transferred, good. Yeah? So if you would expect the reference value to change quite often, yeah, then this FW is important yeah? and if this is important we should have an amplitude range of 4 to 10 yeah? and a phase, a phase reserve uh, from 40 to 60 degree. Okay? If you do not expect the reference value to change but your main focus is on eliminating disturbances. So if the disturbance function F set is for more importance, yeah, then we can go a little bit closer. Yeah? Then we can say amplitude range is from 2 to 3, amplitude range, amplitude reserve is from 2 to 3, and here from 20 to 50 degree. Yeah, a little bit closer to the edge. Okay. Yeah. If there is something between, take something between. Yeah. It's always a sort of, some sort of trade-off. That's Nyquist criteria. Next time we're going to talk about stability with dead time elements. Yeah, so delay elements, but not PT1 or PT2 elements, real dead time elements. And we will see, ah, this is not very nice. Yeah? We'll keep this in mind with the Nyquist point and so on, and analyze our system with dead time. Yeah? For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.